Hello filmmakers, it's Kerry with Filmmaker Central and we're going to dig in to some DaVinci Resolve Fusion today. And what we're going to do is look at two different ways of creating kind of the same effect. And what we're going for is either a dust, steam, smoke, uh, fog, that type of a, an effect that you can use in different types of situations. And we're gonna look at the quick and dirty way of doing it, and we're gonna look at um, a more advanced way of doing it without really getting deep in the weeds using some built-in fusion templates. And of course, you can always take this and do a lot of other things with it. So stay right there, we'll be right back. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. And here I've got this simple shot of the back of my Jeep. We're going through the woods and it's okay. I mean, it's a totally usable shot, but let's say we want to just spice it up a little bit, right? We want to give it a little bit of a dusty feeling and maybe add some directional lighting to it. Something that's just going to tell the story a little bit better than just this fairly clean shot here. I mean, there's one spot um, early on. Yeah, kind of like right there. You kind of see from the right hand corner coming in, you see these, these light streaks through a little bit of dust. So we want to kind of emulate that and ramp it up a little bit. So We've got the clip selected. We're going to go into Fusion. Now, I know I haven't done a lot of Fusion tutorials in a while, and if you want more, be sure and comment. Let me know what you're trying to do. Let me know if you just want to start at the basics. I, I, I love working in Fusion, and I don't do enough of it. So if there's some things that you want to learn, let me know, and we'll, we'll play around and we'll, uh, find some answers together. And with this new MacBook Pro M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM, it's so much easier to do this stuff. So, all right, we have our footage here. And what I'm gonna do is shift space and type in fast noise. And I want that fast noise node right there. And since I had my media one selected, it's just gonna automatically create a merge. And wham, look at that, we have fog. Oh, uh, yes and no. I mean, it, first off, well, let's just play it, right? It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there with this kind of a random um, look to it. So there's, there's no motion to it. It's just, it's not gonna look bright. So, and it's bright and it's white and, okay. It's not the look we're going for. Okay, so what are we gonna do? I'm gonna click on fast noise and hit one so that it puts it in the right hand uh, side of the screen here so we can see what it's doing. And if we play it, well, it's, it's literally doing nothing, right? And so let's make it do something. So over on the right hand side here, we've got all of our options for fast noise. We have centering, detail, contrast, brightness, uh, locking the XY, scaling it, angle, seeth, and seeth rate. Well, seeth and seeth rate, that's what we're going to play with because that's, think of those as kind of the randomness and the rate of randomness, right? So if I adjust the seeth, you can see what it's doing there. It's creating more patterns, right? Uh, it's not necessarily that we need more pattern to it. We just need the pattern to, to move. So let me undo that. And if we increase the seeth rate, let's give it something uh, like 0.5. Now when we play it, okay, well, that's obviously way too much movement, right? So we want to really tone this down because as we're following on this trail, you know, we're not going to get this perfect, like moving through the fog effect doing this. So what we want is just a little bit of movement so it, it doesn't look super, super fake. All right, so I'm gonna crank this down and maybe like, let's try 
right around 0.2. Yeah, see, that's still way too much. 0 let's try 0 0.0036. There, we, look at that. Now we have just the slightest hint of movement to it. So it doesn't look like it's static, but it's not like crazy motion either. Okay, I think we're starting to get somewhere. Now, if it's too bright, too dark, you know, we can definitely play with those. Let's try cranking the brightness down a little bit, seeing what we get there. It's probably gonna look a little splotchy, so may not be the look that we want. Let's, in fact, let's go ahead and keep it back up there. Let's go over to color, right? Now with color, we can change our alpha and ugh, no, that definitely doesn't work. That makes it goes kind of the opposite direction. Um, let's change our color because this is dusty. So let's, let's just make it a hair on the kind of the brownish side. Let's see if that matches. Oh, okay. Might have been a little much. Uh, let's try turning the red down just a hair. Okay, so now that gives us a little more of a dusty feel to it. I'm kind of liking that. And all right, I think, I think we're in pretty good shape there. So there's other options in here that we can play with if we needed to, but I'm not too concerned about any of them. Um, I think this is gonna work pretty well for what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I might wanna play around with this a little bit more and try and add another node to make it a little bit more transparent. But for the sake of this, we're trying to do quick and dirty, just trying to add a little bit more dynamic feel to this. So we have this dust going on, we've got the color kinda of looking good, but let's bring in these light rays. And from there, I'm gonna just click on the merge node, hit shift space, and type in light rays right there. All right, we have the light from the heavens going on here. So it's a bit much. And all we really need to do here is just turn down our brightness. All right, now we're gonna get these directional light rays coming in. Now, I might wanna play with this and maybe I need to do that before the fog versus after the fog. Uh, so let's try that. I'm gonna hold down shift and drag light rays from one side to the other. Now let's see what we got. Yeah. Now let's try kicking up the brightness a little bit. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna go over to the edit tab and I'm gonna let this go ahead and render. And I'm just gonna let this do it in real time so you can kinda see that I'm not cheating, I'm not speeding it up. This is pretty much what it's taking to do this. And I love this because before this would have taken just probably close to an hour and we're already done. Now let's take a look at it. We'll go full screen. And we've added kind of this mystical look to it by adding these light rays that we can see, this f dust foggy effect to it. So yeah, okay, I think we've done ourselves some pretty good justice there. Now that was the quick and dirty way of doing this. So I'm gonna reset the fusion composition and we're gonna go back in. We got our clean footage here, go back into fusion. And now we're gonna try something a little bit different, all right? So over on our effects, if you don't have that up, click on effects. And what I wanna do is go to templates, go to fusion, go to particles, Right? And here we have a number of templates that are built in. So we can just use these. Now they may not be perfect, you might be able to go in and tweak them a little bit, but let's just go down to Steam. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this in here, and now we have the Steam effect. Now if I'm gonna 
I'm on that render node, I'm gonna hit one, and let's see what it does. Okay, so it's gonna create this steam coming up from the ground. Now this isn't gonna be perfect, and we'd probably want to adjust the timing on it so that when it starts, I mean, it starts off with nothing, right? And then it builds. But just for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and plug it in and see how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna take that render, attach it to the median, media in, so boom, okay, great. Let's give it a play. Nothing's working, right? Well, it's a sizing issue. If we look over on the other side here, there it is. We have this little puff of steam coming from the middle of the frame there. All right, so we gotta fix that. Now, if we come over here, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's a little on the small side. So I think after the render 3D, I'm just gonna add a transform node. This, this will probably make life a little easier. Now if we scale it up, we just, it's just not getting anywhere, right? Well, one of the things about DaVinci Resolve is a lot of times you'll have a slider that only lets you go so far, right? But if we type something in here, let's go to 40. Boom, we've just, drastically increase the size of that. All right, now let's go to the beginning and let's give her a play. Now we have the smoke bellowing up <laughs> quite heavily. So it's, it's just another way of doing it. Now, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna use this, it doesn't look right, you know, by any standard, but it's just, something to show you that you can often use these built-in templates. Now, we can probably just turn down the, um, you know, there's, let's go over here. We can look at the P emitter and the number, the variance, lifespan, velocity. Okay, it's at 0.06. Let's try turning this way down. Okay, all right. So even though this is a template, it's all built in Fusion, so it's allowing me to do, um, you know, edits to it. I can modify this, this existing template to do what I want it to do. Now, I, would still want to go in, in fact, uh, let me see if I can show you this. Um, now I didn't create this template, it's built in, so sometimes they, they aren't all exactly how we would like them to be. But let's look at this one full screen first. Okay, we got this little dusty stuff coming in. Not bad, not bad. It's given us just this little bit of, of extra fogginess to it that I was really looking for. Okay, and just like we did before, I'm gonna be on that media in. I'm gonna see if we can add those light rays in here. Let's try turning the brightness down a little bit. All right, let's go over to our edit page and let this one render for just a moment and we'll see what we've come up with. Maybe we'll like it, maybe we won't. Maybe we can adjust the time offset so that that steam starts a little earlier, you know, but you can also just go through that template and see what it's doing because maybe you want to, you know, rotate it. You want it to come in from a different angle. You want it to you know, come in from the middle of the screen instead of the bottom of the screen. Instead of having a velocity, you want it to just go out in all directions. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Let's go full screen. Let's give it a little look. Okay, cool. We've got this little bit of fog coming in. It starts. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's a lot more subtle the way it's kind of toned down right now. We see the light rays. There's a little puff right there at the end. So two different ways of accomplishing similar effects. One is quick and dirty. Just throw some fast noise on there, play around with the color and opacity, or go ahead and use particle effects and really do something a little bit more creative. So hopefully this helped you understand a little bit more about Fusion. 
it was very, very intimidating for me early on. And I don't want it to be intimidating for new people because it is so fun to play with. There's so many things you can do, so many special effects, so many absolutely stupid things that you can do, but there's fantastic stuff. I love object tracking. I love adding these dynamic effects to them. Now, another thing, and I, let's just do this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this fusion composition. And I'm not gonna touch the actual footage this time. Let's go over to our effects. We'll grab a fusion composition. We'll put that on top of it. So now we're not touching the actual footage. We're just going to add a fusion comp on top of it. So if I come over here and we add a fast noise and we'll take it to a merge and we'll take that over to our media out. Um, didn't really need the merge, but I, I might want to add something else. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that in there. We'll bump up our seeth rate a little bit. Okay, we're starting to see a little movement there. That might be, a, it's probably a little too much. Let's try like 0.04, there we go. Okay, so we just have this basic composition here. Let's go back to our edit page and look, we have kind of the same effect. So not too shabby here in what we've done. Okay, but what we forgot to do is uh, on our fast noise, we'll go over to color. We'll give it, again, that little bit of dustiness color to it. And let's go back to our edit page. So we don't have to do something directly on the footage. We do if we're tracking or something, but we can just do a fusion comp right on top of it, which is kind of cool. Now, in this case, because of this, we have our opacity slider and I can really, I mean, I can basically turn this off. So if I just want to give it a little bit of touch of it, yeah. So in this case, I've got some good control because I did it in this manner. All right, now let's go ahead and completely recreate the rest of it. We'll find, we'll go to our open effects. We'll go to our light rays. Let's put the light rays on the footage and go over to effects. Let's turn the brightness down just a hair. We'll go to the beginning of that. Let's go full screen and let's give it a play. All right, so we've accomplished the same thing with the fast noise, but we didn't actually put it with the footage. We just did it as a layer on top and that gave us some nice control. We have some dust flying in, we have these beautiful light rays, and we can change it, remove it, disable it, we can do all kinds of things without really affecting us. So if it was really bogging down our workflow, we could do it as a separate composition like this and then just not utilize it until the final render. So that's one reason to go ahead and do it that way. It's kind of like doing it as an adjustment clip. So, Hope you enjoyed this. If you want more of these, let me know. Please comment. Let me know what you're looking for. Let me know how I can help you. Let me know the types of things that you want to try and create within DaVinci Resolve, and we'll try and do it together. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.